Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning on this uh, 10th Sunday after Pentecost. And whether you are, I am coming through, aren't I? And uh, whether you're joining us in person or online for the first time visitor or long time member, uh, we welcome you as we welcome Christ into our midst. Uh, assisting with worship today, Janet Wolf as our organist and Carrie Warner as our reader and many others seen and unseen. Thank you for sharing your gifts as she's walking through the door there, Janet. Um, <coughs> as we're gearing up for fall, a few announcements. Um, so next Sunday, August 13th, um, we will be having a blessing of the backpacks and uh, the blessing of our school teachers, educational professionals, uh, support staff. Uh, so if you are in any of those categories, bring your backpack, briefcase, whatever, what, what have you, and you will receive a blessing on that day. That would be next Sunday, August 13th. Um, also a note for our National Youth Gathering folks, um, I do have registration forms available, so if you're here, See me, and if you're not, I will find you. Um, St. Luke's is also hosting a women's fall cluster meeting sep Saturday, September 9th, um, with registration starting at 9.30 a.m. Uh, it would be helpful if you could RSVP to Linda by the end of the month, August 28th. Um, there will be child care available. So for all you younger families, uh, for, um, are welcome to do that as well. Uh, this month, oh, there we go, got some juice. Uh, this month, Meals on Wheels. St. Luke is responsible for uh, helping out with that for the month, or not this month, next month, month of September. Uh, so we have a sign-up sheet in the back, and if you feel called to serve in that capacity, you can either sign up on the sheet or call the office and let us know how you're interested in helping with that ministry. Are there any other announcements, corrections, additions? If not, I invite you to rise as you are comfortable for the confession and forgiveness. In remembrance of our new life in Christ through the waters of baptism, we begin at the baptismal font in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our opening hymn.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. church for the unity of all for this holy house for all who worship and praise let us pray to the lord let us pray to the lord kyrie eleison on our world That we may live out truth and justice and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison every day. For peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. That you center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. So 
Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. God the Father. Amen. 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 Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the highest, the highest, and peace to God's people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our psalm for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9, and 14 through 21. We will read these responsively. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You, you are righteous in all, all your ways, your ways and, and loving in all, all your works. works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. You, you fulfill, fulfill the desire of those who fear you. You, you hear their cry and save, save them. them. You watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. Here ends the psalm. The second reading is from Romans 9, verses 1 through 5. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. 
For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promise. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we call? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come on up. (laughs) Well, is it just you and Isaac? Oh, we got one more. So did today's gospel story sound familiar? Have you heard it before? Okay. It's about feeding people, right? So Jesus was teaching these, uh, teaching these people and healing them because some of them were sick. And all of a sudden, it's getting around supper time, right? People are getting hungry and you get kind of, do you get kind of crabby when you get hungry? <laughs> well, I know I do. Anyway, so, the, so Jesus' disciples are, are thinking with their brains, right? And they're saying, well, why don't we give these people a break and they can go get a bite to eat and then we'll be back on track with our stuff, okay? But Jesus is like, no, we're going to feed them. And I have five loaves and two fish. I have a couple of fish sticks and an order of french fries. Is that enough for 5,000 people? No. Well, for Jesus it is because he broke the pieces of bread and the fish and he blessed them and everybody got a full meal. Is that pretty amazing? And not only that, they had 12 baskets of scraps left over. Now, that's showing how God provides for us, right? How God loves us, how God loves you, and that God's love for you 
will always be there, and there will always be enough. And that's, the, and that's what Jesus is teaching us in that story, is that Jesus provides us with enough love and enough grace than we could ever ask for, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for, uh, for giving us your love and your grace through Jesus and giving us enough to eat and to thrive as you call us as your beloved children in this world. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, Jesus Christ. Uh, First of all, some of you have been asking about uh, Kirsten's camp experience this week. Uh, She had a wonderful time. I was also chaplain of the week at Camp of the Cross, and I had a wonderful time, but I'm also exhausted, (laughs) which is a good thing, which is a good thing. Uh, We had about uh, 26 kids, so it wasn't like their biggest camp that they offer, but uh, lots of energy, lots of excitement about, about our faith that whole entire week. And I'll be doing a... um, Kirsten's a little younger, so she's not quite comfortable getting front, up front, live and in person, but I'm hoping to talk her into doing like a video interview that we can show on the screen in the upcoming Sundays, because she really did have a good time, and I want that experience to be shared as a thank you for supporting her to go to camp as well. But anyway, so best-selling leadership author... Stephen Covey, if you've heard of him, he does The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, those types of books. Uh, He tells this story about an incident that he experienced on the New York subway system, an experience that would radically alter his perception of what is often happening behind the scenes in our lives. And here's what he has to say. He says, I remember a mini paradigm shift I experienced one Sunday morning on a subway in New York. People were sitting quietly, some reading newspapers, some lost in thought, some resting with their eyes closed. It was a calm, peaceful scene. Then suddenly, a man and his children entered the subway car. The children were so loud and rambunctious that instantly the whole climate changed. The man sat down next to me and closed his eyes, apparently oblivious to the situation. The children were yelling back and forth, throwing things, even grabbing people's papers. It was very disturbing, borderline annoying. And yet the man sitting next to me did nothing. It was difficult not to feel irritated. I could not believe that he could be so insensitive as to let his children run wild like that and do nothing about it, taking no responsibility at all. It was easy to see that everyone else on the subway felt irritated too. So finally, with what I felt like was unusual patience and restraint, I turned to him and said, Sir? Your children are really disturbing a lot of people. I I wonder if you couldn't control them a little more. The man lifted his gaze as if to come to a consciousness of the situation for the first time and said softly, Oh, you're right. I guess I should do something about it. We just came from the hospital where their mother died about an hour ago. I don't know what to think, and I guess they don't know how to handle it either. Can you imagine what I felt in that moment? My paradigm shifted. Suddenly I saw things differently. And because I saw differently, I thought differently. I felt differently. I behaved differently. My irritation vanished. I didn't have to worry about controlling my attitude or my behavior. My heart was filled with the man's pain. Feelings of sympathy and compassion flowed freely. Your wife just died, I said. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you tell me about it? 
What can I do to help? Everything changed in an instant. From curiosity and annoyance to straight-up empathy and compassion, that's what today's gospel is about. It's such a familiar and beloved story of Jesus' ministry. And it features that transformational compassion. It starts out telling us unmistakably that Jesus traveled somewhat of a distance in order to have solitude. Because let's face it, he's in grief right now. He's in grief over the death of John the Baptist, one of his closest friends. And did he get that solitude? Did he get that time alone? Absolutely not. The crowds and the disciples followed right along with him. But instead of being annoyed with the crowds and trying to avoid the crowds, our gospel says that Jesus had great compassion for them. He had this deep care for him, for them. He healed their sick. Jesus was in the middle of grieving the death of someone he loved deeply yet still took care of others. And that's compassion. But Jesus' compassion doesn't stop there. It's getting late. It's towards sunset. And Jesus' disciples, they're probably getting antsy and annoyed and tired and just want to go home and, and, and want to get rid of this crowd much as Jesus did at first. And they thought sending the crowd away to go buy their own food would be a good cop-out. That way Jesus could finally have his solitude too. Well, their suggestion was not heeded by Jesus. Uh, Jesus, continuing to show compassion for the crowd, has a desire to feed them as well. And so Jesus blesses five loaves and two fish. Barely enough for one person, let let alone a whole crowd. Much like Stephen Covey's parenting advice to the newly single dad on the subway train, was that was quickly changed to compassion. I suspect that the disciples experienced a similar transformation. Instead of wanting to send the crowds away, the disciples had a hand in feeding the crowd physical bread. They had a hand in showing that same compassion that Jesus has shown to them time and time again. The gospel shows us how God in Jesus Christ comes to us, has compassion for us, and transforms us in ways that we don't expect or think of. If I had to guess, I would say that most of us in this room could think of a time when we were surprised just like the crowd and disciples at this compassionate miracle. In fact, I I want you to take a moment and to think of a time when you may be, have been in need of compassion and love. Who were the ones that came out of the woodwork to show you love and compassion that you least expected? And when I say compassion, I mean someone who has set aside their own issues to care for you. Or maybe you were that person who set aside your own issue, issues to care for others. It could have been your next-door neighbor taking care of your daily chores while you were laid up. A random family that you barely knew making a freezer meal for you. Someone giving you a ride to a doctor's appointment. Or strangers helping you out financially in a crisis. And the list could go on and on and on. Or on the flip side, maybe you were in a situation 
where your own perspective and assumptions were changed, transformed from judgment to compassion. Maybe you heard the whole story which broke your assumptions apart and now you can do nothing but share compassion for that person or situation. Whatever the case, it is God and Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit that changes your hearts daily. Because Jesus went through that ultimate, faithful, compassionate act for all people. Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that all of the assumptions, the judgment, the malice, and the sin that you make against others would be forgiven and washed away. And so that you may freely have that forgiveness, that grace and mercy in abundance. And instead of judgment and malice, we share love and compassion and bread. That was the ultimate act of compassion, was God's love through Jesus on the cross. You know, I also love this morning's reading from Isaiah. It gives us a clear mapping and explanation of God's grace and love. In these words, God is inviting us to share in God's grace for each and every one of you. God is not calling us to judgment or war or anything hurtful. God is not threatening to do away with God's creation. He already did that once and then promised not to do it again. God is saying, come to the waters. Come and eat the rich foods of the Spirit. Don't waste your time trying to feebly attempt to please God through earthly shenanigans. And the word shenanigans is a direct translation. It is the Spirit of God that comes to God's people and has made a steadfast covenant that no one can take away. And that steadfast covenant is Jesus Christ and that promise of grace and forgiveness for you. So on this day, brothers and sisters in Christ, I encourage you to change your perspective, much like Stephen Covey did on the subway train. Because the bottom line is, we never truly know the full story of what our fellow humans are going through. So be like Jesus. Share compassion instead of judgment. Share love instead of hate. And share in the breaking of bread faithfully physically or otherwise. Because the bottom line is that Jesus comes to each and every one of you in the ways that you need him most. Jesus has compassion for you through his death on the cross. And that's the promise of God's faithful love for all people. For you and for me and for everyone in any age, time, and space. Thanks be to God. Amen.
As you are comfortable, I invite you to rise as we confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. You gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love throughout the world. Guide us in the mission of the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems. Send favorable weather. Supply food and water to nourish all creatures. And raise us up to care for all you have created. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire to support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief for those in war-torn areas. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You comfort those who are hurting. Accompany those who are alone. Heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who call on you. We especially pray for this day, we pray for Marla, Joel, Carol, Diane, Myra, Harrison, and all who we name before you both silently and aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place us within communities for mutual support and love. Reveal yourself to us in worship, fellowship, and ministry with our neighbors. Provide for feeding ministries and food banks here in our area that we share your abundance with all who hunger. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have placed before us examples of faithful living who have witnessed to your promises throughout time and space. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace with one another as you are comfortable. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. (laughs) It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. 
and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await Jesus' coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share with this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let us remember that this is not my table. This is not your table. This is not St. Luke's table. But this is Christ's table. And all who believe that Jesus Christ is truly present in, with, and under the bread and wine through his body and blood are welcome to share in this meal. All is now ready. You may be seated. As you're comfortable, please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Mm. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our sending hymn. King eternal, the day of march has come. Henceforth in fields of conquest, your tent will be our home. Through days of preparation, your grace has made us strong. And now, O King eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King eternal, we follow not with fear. And For gladness breaks like, like morning where your face appears. Your cross is lifted over us. We journey in its light. The crown awaits a conquest. Lead on, O God of mine. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And remember, God loves you and so do I.